Welcome into another edition of First Take on Thursday. Thank you for being with us. As always, Max Kellerman, Molly Parham here in Bristol. Stephen A. is in Philly. Gentlemen, how are we feeling today? Ready to What's go. What's going on? How y'all doing? Good. How you doing, Stephen A.? I got a lot on my mind. Let's go. Both okay. of Okay. On that note, let's do it. And we start with the ongoing controversy involving, of course, Colin Kaepernick. Former Super Bowl quarterback and current CBS commentator Boomer Esiason blasting Kaepernick for sitting during the national anthem at a CBS event Tuesday, telling Bob Glauber of Newsday, quote, I cannot say in the strongest, most direct way that it's an embarrassment and it's about as disrespectful as any athlete has ever been. The NFL football field is not a place for somebody to further their political ambitions. Put on that blue police uniform and put the shield on and see what it's like to put your life in harm's way every single day. And then get back to me when you're making 35000 or 40000 a year as opposed to $11 million that he's making. Stephen A., did Boomer cross the line with those comments? Yes, he did. He absolutely crossed the line. And I want to preface my comments by saying that I don't know Boomer Esiason personally. I've met him on several occasions. I think he's a really good man. Uh, he's a fabulous analyst, uh, both on radio and on television. He's a good person. He's a good guy. Um, I am not casting any aspersions on him in terms of his character. I'm only speaking about Boomer Esiason as it specifically pertains to these quotes about Colin Kaepernick. He crossed the line. And the reason why I believe Boomer Esiason crossed the line, and I really, really wish this was one of those days where he wasn't working for CBS and I was working for ESPN because I would gladly show up on his radio show to tell him why I think he crossed the line. It's one of those situations where uh, Boomer Esiason, I hate to sit up there and say it to you, but you'd have to be black to understand. Because not being a black man, being as white as you are, to say the statement that you said uh, just comes across as something incredibly insensitive to what it's like to be a black man in America. There's just no other way to slice it. I am quite certain he didn't mean it that way. Knowing his character, what he stands for, and who he is, I don't think Boomer Sison meant it that way. But to a black person, it could come across no other way as far as I'm concerned. First of all, let's, let's narrow this down, and let's talk about this for a second here. If it was so egregious, then why doesn't the NFL mandate that you must stand for the national anthem the way the National Basketball Association does so? The NFL specifically states it encourages it, but at the same time, it doesn't mandate it. Why? Because it's, it's within your right to stand or to sit. It involves your First Amendment privileges under the United States Constitution. That's point number one. But I really took issue with what he said in bringing up the police officers. Now, Max Kellerman, Molly Karam, how many times have I been on these airwaves literally addressing the issue of police brutality uh, against the African-American community? I specifically state that over 95 percent of the police officers uh, that, that swear to protect or that have sworn to protect and serve our nation do exactly that. They deserve to be commended. They deserve to be celebrated and respected to the highest order. We're not talking about police officers. We're talking about the few rogue ones who engage in insidious behavior. That's who we're talking about here. So if we understand that, that's one of the reasons I religiously say it's not police brutality. It's, the, it's brutality on a part of some police officers by members of the African-American community. But this is something that is not new. It went on in Cincinnati in the 60s. It went on in various cities decades before that, decades after that. This stuff, as it pertains to black folks and the police officers of this nation, it's not a new issue. It's something that's been going on for decades upon decades. I totally understand why Boomer Esiason wouldn't know much about it or be sensitive enough to it because if you are a white individual that is not subjected to some of the insidious things that take place against the African-American community, of course you wouldn't know. That's not, th that's not something for Boomer Esiason to be criticized over. But to sit up there and so flippantly throw it out there as if there's no argument, there's no validity whatsoever to anything that Colin Kaepernick echoed, I think reeks of a heightened level of insensitivity that, to be quite honest with you, I'm very shocked that Boomer Esiason articulated. And that's really what I wanted to say about this. Boomer Esiason 
is one of those conscientious individuals, incredibly intelligent, very well informed for the most part, it seems on many occasions, certainly knows his football, does an exceptional job at WFAN in New York, does an exceptional job on CBS, and personally with this foundation, he does God's work as far as I'm concerned. He's a wonderful, wonderful person by all accounts. But in this particular instance, he really would have to be black to understand, and more importantly, he would need to be black to really make the kind of statement that he made. Uh, but to go in a different direction the way that he did, it just showed either a level of insensitivity that I was shocked to hear coming out of his mouth or just complete ignorance as to what black folks have been going through in the United States of America. And it's really unfortunate that he took that position. And I just feel compelled to say that. He doesn't have to be black to understand. Uh, I understand. I mean, this is not that difficult to understand. I don't think he crossed any line unless, you know, the, the, the anti-intellectual line, there's a strong culture of, in the jock culture of anti-intellectualism. Essentially, when things get too complex to think about, you shut down your brain and just go with your emotion. Let's take, let's take his comments one at a time. The NFL football field is not a place for somebody to further their political ambitions. Apparently, it is a place, according to Boomer Esiason, for compulsory and therefore meaningless displays of patriotism. If you are forced to show how patriotic you are by standing for the national anthem, it becomes meaningless. If you're forced to do it, it's just a display. There's nothing driving it other than the fact that you have to do it. You're not allowed not to, which is not the case in the NFL. And he seems to struggle, Boomer Esiason, with the difference between an active political statement, like wearing a political hat or staging a march. It's not like Kaepernick is staging a march on the field. He stated very clearly his conscience won't let him stand for the national anthem because he feels in various respects this country's not living up to its ideals. Do you know where you are? So, so, so he's just refusing to participate in something that is in fact not compulsory. Do you know where you're forced to, to participate in that kind of thing? Uh, North Korea. You know why? Because they have a communist dictator. Which is why many of us who stand up for the national anthem and think great things when they see the flag are happy and people who want to tie this to the military are happy that the military serves and protects because we are not forced to do this type of thing. Um, by the way, how many other, like we don't sing the national or stand for the national anthem before the movies. That's a public gathering. I can think of very few things more American than like, you know, if you make a purchase at a store, right, the heart of capitalism, do you stand for the national anthem? Well, I mean, the military serves and protects and helps us do that, too, don't they? That's our way of life. And do we stand for the national anthem every time? But somehow this is interwoven. It's connected to our sport, sports culture in such a way that people can't get past it. Now, let's. what about the other, the other um, comment? Put on that blue police uniform and put the shield on and see what it's like to put your life in harm's way. Uh, yes, Boomer, Esiason. Uh, the police have a dangerous and difficult job. You'd have to be an idiot not to recognize that. Police have a dangerous and difficult job. That does not mean that there aren't also inequities that persist in various forms in American life, including in law enforcement, that have yet to be remedied. I don't see what one thing has to do with the other. As usual, by the way, you know who comes off as the adult in the room of everyone who's made comments on this? Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. As usual, a couple days go by, a week goes by after a political controversy, and Kareem weighs in, and you go, yup, that's the adult in the room. He said, the most un-American thing about this is the persistence of the problem. It, the, the point that Kaepernick is making, the fact that that persists inequities in our system is un-American. And, and Stephen A. Smith, he's 100% right. What, part well, of what is uniquely American is American exceptionalism, which mm -hmm. I believe in. It, you could, it could be said, above all things, to be our optimism. We believe there's a solution to every problem. Not every, every country around the world, in terms of their culture, well, really uh, uh, symbolizes that the w and, and acts on that the way America does. And frequently, the way we achieve it, the way we achieve change, is through protest. This is a, 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 an especially American thing, and therefore patriotic thing, that Kaepernick is doing. Well, I appreciate your sentiments, Max, and, and all of us can learn from it. But I'm zeroing in on Boomer Esiason. 
That's where my focus is. That's why we're leading this show. And when I think about what he said, let's dissect it. You dissect it in your way. Let's dissect it in my way. He says, quote, he signed a contract with an NFL team. He has on an NFL helmet. He's got an NFL uniform on. He doesn't have the right, I don't believe. Well, Boomer Esiason, it doesn't matter what you believe because you're flat out wrong. He actually does have the right. NFL laws, bylaws state as much, as well as our United States Constitution. Constitution. So you're flat out wrong, factually. That is factually incorrect. That's point number one. But we go a step further. And he says, I would tell him before you open your mouth, maybe you should take a ride in a police car on a Friday or Saturday night in one of these major urban cities in America. Just go on a couple of 911 calls. Maybe then you can get an idea of what these people making 35000 a year have to deal with. Boomer Sison, I'd like to ask a question. How would you know? How would you know that? Because maybe you've taken a ride with uh, police officers during those 911 calls. It would have been nice that you said so. Uh, maybe he has, maybe he has not. I don't know. But I do know this. There are a lot of folks in America who happen to be black that when the police come, even when it's a 911 call made by those within their community, they get very nervous because they don't know how the police are going to react. I'm going to remind Boomer Esiason, while unarmed black men were killed by some police officers who happened to go rogue, there was also a white individual in South Carolina that gunned down nine folks. And when he was arrested, they took him for a Burger King. There was an Uber driver in Michigan that gunned down six people, and he was arrested. People are getting arrested who happen not to be black. People who are black happen to be dying. And these are the kind of things that Boomer Esiason, to me, should know. I believe he does know. Now, I do, under, I do want to emphasize this. He does have the right to feel the way that he feels. But let's just be open and plain about it. You may not have to announce that you're white, but it's clear that you're very white in this regard because you seem to have no, no understanding or an absence, a flagrant absence of sensitivity to what black folks go through. I am very, very successful. God has blessed me tremendously. The car that I drive, the home that I have, the bank, the bank account that I have at my disposal, it didn't stop me from getting pulled over on Columbus Avenue just, uh, you know, just a few months ago with eight cops surrounding my car. And thank God one of the cops recognized me being from ESPN because I'm Stephen A. of ESPN. Because before that, there was an officer that was cussing at me because I asked a question. What did I do? And that one question prompted him to literally put his hand on his gun and tell me to shut the F up before the officer grabbed him and said, whoa, do you know who that is? And I put both of my hands on my steering wheel. I rolled down all four of my windows. These are the kind of things that happen. And so it doesn't matter whether you're rich or poor. It doesn't matter whether you have affluence or you're mired in poverty. It just seems that when your pigmentation is darker than white folks, that you tend to have trouble from time to time significantly more than others. Now, I can't speak for white folks and what they go through. Maybe their problems are the same. It doesn't appear to be that way. So when Boomer Esiason makes a quote like that, I wish he would inform me a little bit more about where that comes from, because just blanketly stating what he states comes across as him being far less than the great, great man I know him to be. There's, there are two issues here. I, I understand what you're saying. There's the racial sensitivity issue, but there's also the anti-intellectual component of what he said. And this is an ongoing situation in sports, uh, especially among the many of the former athletes. But you do see there are intellectuals among former athletes like Kareem. And that's the reason I brought up Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, because Boomer here is being stridently intellectual. In other words, I feel a certain way about it. So my my kind of uh, my cerebral cortex is going to shut down and I am going to get very emotional about it. Whereas Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, and, and this may also be related obviously to racial sensitivity, has a, is actually thinking it through. So, uh, so while I get the racial insensitivity point, what struck me was the lack of thought process be be you know, it, behind what he's saying, behind, behind what Boomer's saying. Well, well, it doesn't add up, you. it doesn't make sense.
But that's what struck you. What struck me is that the way Boomer Esiason came across is exactly and precisely the kind of attitude black folks in America are lamenting about what we believe to be is prevalent within the white community. Right. And Boomer Esiason is a highly intelligent and a highly accomplished man who has a level of sensitivity that, in my estimation, should not be challenged. That's why I emphasize I'm only talking about Boomer Esiason's comments about Colin Kaepernick. I am not talking about Boomer Esiason, the man, because I know him to be a very good man. Th those... And it's just like others that, 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 you know, they have their views, and I get it. But if you're not, if you're not black, and you come across the way that Boomer Esiason came across to the eyes of the black community, we're looking at you and saying, that's the problem. That's the problem. Those who benefit from the status quo are generally um, reluctant for it to change. So that when Boomer Esiason, who benefits from the status quo, I mean, obviously, we talk about persistent inequities is based on our history. Look at per capita income, education, et cetera, based on race. And unless you're a racist who believes that there are intrinsic differences somehow in races of people that lead to that, you must acknowledge the inequities that persist based on our history. Those who benefit from that status quo are reluctant for it to change. So when Boomer Esiason sees, Kaepernick, Esiason sees Kaepernick not standing up for the flag, he's outraged. You stand up for the national anthem. Uh, you, this should be forced. And Kaepernick's saying, wait a minute, I get to decide that. Furthermore, I don't need to show you by standing up for the flag that I'm celebrating everything that's right about the country. Maybe I would like to protest what's wrong. That's my prerogative. Matt, that's part of being something. an American. You, you you also missed a very important point here. Boomer Esiason was talking about he doesn't have the right when he clearly has the right. Then he comes back and says, I would cut him. So let's understand what Boomer Esiason is saying. Even though you believe in America and all that America stands for and our U.S. Constitution's First Amendment talks about freedom of speech, you then go out and say, not only do you disagree with Colin Kaepernick, but you are so emphatically against what he did that you would cut him, which means you would cut him for exercising his right and enough, to do what he has every right to do. And enough, Think about that for a second. He would cut him. And enough NFL executives apparently agree with him. There have been reports about NFL executives talking about they wouldn't hire him. He's a traitor. Well, what does that say? I mean, in fact, you're well, let me ask you this, Max. In fact, hold by on, not let me, hiring hold on, Max, hold on, you're hold on, being un-American. You're hold being on, Max, a traitor. I got a question. But, yeah. I, got, I, got a, I got a question. I got a question. Yeah. I'm not the white guy on this show. Go ahead. That would happen to be you. That would happen to be you. You tell me how should we look at white folks in a position of power who would say, they would cut Colin Kaepernick for exercising his First Amendment rights. Well, I, Tell I, me what you think. I, I would say, as we were uh, discussing yesterday, um, and Damian Woody said Rodney Harrison doesn't speak for black folk, right? I would say that Boomer Esiason here doesn't speak for white folks. Uh, but the NFL executives who said that they would not hire Colin Kaepernick, I don't know that that's legal. I don't know that it's illegal either. I do know it's certainly unethical because it is the enforcement of a kind of code of behavior uh, that is self-reinforced in the NFL that not everybody agrees with, but those entrenched in power agree with, and so they will maintain the status quo. Let's end That's it right precisely here. Kaepernick's protest let's, against let's the status quo. With this, let's, let's end it with this one statement. The fact that there are people who would do that elevates and illuminates the importance of diversity. Because what you have is undoubtedly white individuals who would come down heavy handed on this young man for exercising his First Amendment rights, which are in violation of our law, which are not in violation of our laws, nor the NFL laws. But when you have that figurative proverbial glass ceiling, these are the kind of things that happen behind the curtains. He'd get cut. Nobody would want him on his team. They wouldn't pick him up. They wouldn't bring him on, et cetera, et cetera. Reach. So the ramifications would be felt. But no one would know officially why, and thereby they would get away with harming this man. This is the plight of black America in the eyes of a lot of black Americans. That is the reality. It is inescapable. And as far as I'm concerned, I don't want to talk about it. I, I'm, I'm upset that... That this is one of those days where I'm really upset 
that working for ESPN, I can't go on a CBS radio show because I would show up to e Boomer Sison show tomorrow and we'd have that conversation respectfully because I respect that man. But we would have a conversation about this because I emphatically disagree with his position, period.